Sometimes life is messy. Have you ever wished you could refocus your mind, home, relationships, and work life? Join us as we use research-based information to make practical changes and simplify life. This is Life Simplified. Welcome back to Life Simplified. March is Living Well Month, which is a national event that promotes overall wellness and the education provided by family and consumer science professionals to improve the lives of people, families, and communities. And we are excited to pick four different topics of wellness to discuss with you this month. There are eight areas of wellness. We have physical, intellectual, emotional, spiritual, environmental, financial, occupational, and social. You can kind of think of these as a wellness wheel, and it helps you evaluate your overall well-being. Typically, when we think of wellness, we think physical. Are we physically active? Do we eat nutrient-dense foods? Do we sleep enough? And we're going to talk about those in a future episode, but we don't always consider that intellectual wellness. So to get us started, what do you think intellectual wellness means? I think of exercise my mind, like using my mind, doing something that is challenging, just something that takes thought and that I have to really focus in on. I think about brain health. Yeah, along the lines of the brain health, I was thinking more of your whole body is well, you're like you're rested and able to actively use your brain. Because I know, I mean, you all know I have a toddler and sometimes my brain just doesn't work because I just don't get enough sleep. And so I feel like, like you talked about, Ashley, it really all plays into each other. And you're going to find that as we are talking today, that all of these different realms of wellness are interrelated. They all feed off of each other. So, and that was one of the things when I was researching this topic, it seemed really interesting to me. And that's one thing that I found that they all depend on each other. And our goal is once is not perfection because we're not going to be perfectly balanced in each realm of wellness, but our goal is to try to get there. And you're all three exactly right as far as what intellectual wellness means. I pulled from three different sources, our NEAFCS website, which is our National Extension Association of Family and Consumer Sciences, which is why we're going to say (laughs) NEAFCS, and the University of New Hampshire Extension, as well as Harvard University. And we will link these resources in our show notes. But according to NEAFCS, intellectual wellness is the ability to open our minds to new ideas and experiences that can be applied to personal decisions, group interaction, and community betterment. It's the desire to learn new concepts, improve skills, and seek challenges in pursuit of lifelong learning. So it is. It's being a lifelong learner. It's exercising your brain, thinking, developing new ideas. One extra that I saw that New Hampshire added to this definition was allowing your brain both stimulation and rest for critical thinking, curiosity, and creativity. And I loved that, that they added in that rest. So it's the process of thinking and exercising your brain, but also giving your brain time to rest. Like Amanda mentioned, sometimes her brain doesn't have as much opportunity to rest and she can feel it. So I just love that part of it. Yeah, I feel that right now. Like my brain needs some rest. It's been go, go, go with work, with kids, with activities, and I can feel the need for a little bit of a brain break. Yes. And that's definitely something that we just have to keep in mind. So it's not only to go, go, go and exercise, exercise, exercise. It's giving that time to slow down as well. The University of New Hampshire Extension has a wellness assessment. And I thought this was really neat. We will link that in the show notes. And it's got all the different 
parts of the wellness wheel, but today we're focusing on intellectual. And so I would encourage you, it's not a diagnostic tool, so it's not going to say you should do this, you should do that, but it just gives you an idea of where you might be or where you might need to add a little extra balance to. They have a list of signs of intellectual wellness. So just think about these things. We're not necessarily going to answer them out loud. But signs of intellectual wellness include, do you try to see all viewpoints of an issue? Are you around people that have beliefs that are different from your own? Do you use your critical thinking skills? Do you like to learn new things? Do you participate in activities that stimulate your brain? Do you know what your values are? We've talked a lot about values on this podcast. And do you know who you truly are? Based on that definition and those questions, what would you say that you are currently doing for your intellectual well-being? Probably for myself, since I am still somewhat new as an agent, is learning new things. You know, learning new curriculum as far as different from the nutritional background that I had. You know, so learning new things when it comes to the Family Consumer Science Agent. I think that's all the time, Joni. Mm -hmm. I, I think for me, like, <laughs> <Doesn't I'm, stop. laughs> no, I feel like I've learned something, which I, that's what I really like about this job is I'm able to, I know sometimes we complain, we're like, we're supposed to know everything about everything. And, but it's good because we get, if we don't, we can research it, we can learn and we have good resources to help us make sure we're getting accurate information. Yeah, I would agree that we're constantly being challenged and trained and learning new things and updating knowledge that we already have because we're constantly learning new things as an organization. But also, I think some of the things I've done recently, you know, participating in leadership groups where I have to get out of my comfort zone and, and learn some new skills in that way and participate in different activities that really challenge how I think, how I lead, um, and how I learn. I think that's been really, really big. And so I think, yeah, I think our job sets us up really nicely for intellectual wellness because there's so many things we can participate in, so many trainings we can take, and just so much information that we can learn and gain each and every day. And it's the same for me. There's like you have all mentioned, there's so many things to be learning. And it's helpful to me when I get a question that I don't know the answer to. And I don't pretend to have all the answers. I've said before for many years, I know a little bit about a lot. That is what I was trained on. I have a degree in family and consumer sciences, which covers a whole wide range of topics. So when we get the question that I don't know the answer to, then that that makes me go find that answer. And this podcast has been really helpful, learning about all these different topics to give the tips and give the tricks and then applying those to my life as well. I also do like crossword puzzles though. So like just the realm of work related intellectual activities, I have like an app that's crossword and I do, I can get really into that challenging myself to just kind of think on that level. Cause that's not, I don't necessarily do that type of intellectual exercise on a basis, but I kind of like that. It's a fun way to just kind of take a break. Okay, let's switch it up. What types of things do you think would increase your intellectual well-being? If you took a look at those questions and you thought, hmm, I might be lacking in this area, what could you do to increase? I think trying new things at home. Um, so a few years ago, my husband and I got into this chess. So we learned how to play chess and we have a chess board and we really enjoyed it. Um, and we don't do that anymore just for lack of time what we say is lack of time I guess probably <laughs> um, but I think maybe learning like a new game or a new skill would be for me that's a good that's, one yeah, like I don't I point. can't play chess at all but my husband can and he's taught my two of my kids so yeah there's always something new to do and that definitely requires thinking and just anytime you're learning something new, I believe we've mentioned before that my husband and I have recently, well, it doesn't seem as recent now, but have learned to play pickleball. And so we have picked that back up now that the weather's kind of cooperating a little bit here and there. And that is great for 
our minds as well as our bodies, which I won't get too much into that because I know we're going to talk about physical wellness, but being physically active is great for your mind as well. And my family really likes trivia. Like my oldest is really into trivia and he has a um, family trivial pursuit game so it has questions for all age groups which is nice because you know we, my youngest is seven and then of course we're adults so we need a broad range but I think it's fun to do things like that or like if you go out to a restaurant that has trivia the games there they like to do that so that can be a fun way to kind of get the whole family involved in intellectual exercises and you can get those tear-off calendars that have different trivia questions on them, and you would have one a day. We, we've done that before at the dinner table. We will have a trivia question or some type of game to play on the tear-off calendar. I was sitting here trying to think, what do I do when, you know, outside of work? And I really can't think of anything, but we have been remodeling our home. And uh, a lot of times I'll have to go and research as far as how to do something and learning new skills like that. So having the main big thing that I've been having to do is measurements and how to convert them and everything. So I would think that that's, you know, making me think. So of skills that I've never had. So those are all excellent examples of things that you're doing. And there's lots of other things that you can do too. I love the learning a new skill and trivia and playing games and those measurements. That's definitely work in the brain for sure. But reading and kind of changing up your genre. So I, I really enjoy fiction and I do the personal development too. But if I were to switch that up a little bit, then that might be working my brain in a whole different realm. Yeah, I'm but, bad about that. Like reading, I'm all like typically in one area and mm -hmm. and I'm not good. At, I do like fiction. I think it's because I want to check out from from everyday life when I'm reading. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to I don't want to learn right now. I just want to not think. But I do think it would be good to try to incorporate that into in, intellectual learning. And even listening, listening to books. Joni, I know you're a big audiobook person. You like to listen to the books and that that's also strengthening your brain, whether you think about it that way or not, listening to podcasts and it could be you're learning something or it could be you're resting your brain by just listening. Any type of brain game, Tiffany mentioned liking to do crossword puzzles and trivia. Those are always great brain teasers. Sudoku, word finds, there's all kinds of different brain games. What's the one? Oh, Wordle. Oh, my, yes. My mom does that. As a matter of fact, we were we were sitting at one of my kids' events the other day, and we we're kind of in between games, and she's over there trying to figure it out, and I'm reading over her shoulder, and we kind of like we're team effort trying to find the word. And she was like, this is my brain exercise. Like, that's literally what she said to me. So I think that's one that people... I know we're into, but things like that, they do really challenge you to to think in a different way. And there's different apps that you can get on your smartphone. And it makes me feel a bit better about letting my child have screen time whenever she's messing with the word games. And I think she's using her brain a little bit more than mindlessly scrolling. But sometimes we need that for our rest. This one I thought was really interesting, debating an issue, but choosing the opposite viewpoint. So don't debate it from the side where you would normally stand on, move to the other side. That, that sounds rough. I know. I was like, that would be hard for me. <laughs> that, that, that sounds too difficult. I, I try to stay away from anything you have to debate. <laughs> well, it's a friendly debate. I know. Like, we're doing it for fun. We're doing it to stimulate our brain. So it seems to be like a silly that you don't really feel passionate about in real life <laughs> right right we're not trying to get in arguments no That's, I don't um, know if you're competitive you might get real might get heated no matter what the topic <laughs> is I will win <laughs> that's true well let's just go back to the conflict resolution from last week and we'll be we'll be good there yes I don't I'm, gonna know. Try, front front. I'm gonna try <laughs> that on my husband this weekend <laughs> <laughs> let us know how that goes yeah <laughs> We already talked about learning something new, but learning a different language. 
one of my sons, when he was deployed the first time, I would ask him what he was doing. He's like, oh, I'm learning how to speak Japanese, you know, that he'd use the app on his phone. So, I mean, that was one thing that I thought was interesting. Now, can he speak Japanese? No, but it was cool that he thought that he could try anyway. Yeah, he's still working his brain. Yeah. Do any of you play a musical instrument? No. No. <laughs> so I play my son's musical. <laughs> well, there, there you go. go. <laughs> there you go. Playing a musical instrument, learning to play a musical instrument. Once upon a time, I could play the piano, but I I don't think I could do it anymore. No, we are not musically inclined. Matter of fact, right now I'm trying to sell a drum set that we never even got out of the box. <laughs> so, you know, that tells you all you need to know about our musical ability. I, I appreciate music. I like to try to sing along to music, but no one else is going to appreciate me playing music. My kids know how to play musical instruments, but I do not know how they were they them skills <laughs> because it wasn't for me or my husband. Well, instead of learning something new, teaching it, teaching <laughs> someone how to do something. We, we have a little bit of experience in that. So yeah, we do that a lot. We do. We do. Starting a new hobby, we're, we're all the time saying, well, I wish I could do this, or I wish I could do that. Well, just taking the day and saying, okay, I'm going to do that today. Being creative, creating something, whether that is music, whether it's art, whether it's a meal, just being creative is a great brain boost. And one that you may not really think about, being social. Being social is great for your brain. So we the visit the museum quite often. So my husband is a history buff. And so every time we go on a vacation, we have to go to a museum. Okay. So we do hit that. Um, our max time at a museum has been three hours. So it's <laughs> we give him a hard time. But when we go on vacations, we try to let everyone have their own or pick their own thing and that's usually what it is so I think we check that off quite often so we do stretch our brain in that way that's an funny. excellent way it is our so our oldest is also a history buff and so we try to throw in some things like that and we're actually working on a trip right now where we're visiting my sister in Philadelphia so that's all things history so we're gonna hit up a couple museums ourselves there so hopefully we'll all enjoy it I know he will but um Maybe we need to institute a maximum amount of time in each yeah, museum probably. as well. <laughs> well, and as far as resting your brain, taking that time to rest your brain is important too. And that can be through mindfulness, that can be meditation, that can be legit taking a nap or getting enough sleep. So my husband, and I call it going in our nothing box. So I it, love it. Like, oh. and that's what we'll refer to it as. Like, and if we're like sit on the couch and maybe he's watching something or I'm scrolling or one of us asks the other one something. We just kind of look at it and we're like, I can't right now. I'm in my nothing box. And they're like, oh, okay, gotcha. I'll wait till later. And so I think we heard it um, maybe in like some kind, I don't know if it was a, a marriage class or some kind of communications. I don't know. We heard it somewhere. We're like, oh, this is perfect. And so now we do refer to like, I'm in my nothing box. I cannot, I cannot tackle that issue at this moment. Mine is far as you talked about me listening to uh, audiobooks. That's mine. Like some days I just have to compress and that's my brain not thinking about anything unless I'm listening for, you know, to my personal growth and that. But most of the time, if it's that, I'm, I'm just checked out. As with most of the things that we talk about, balance is the key. We're not striving per for perfection here. We want to have a balanced view of wellness, which we will talk about more areas of wellness in the next few weeks. But I would encourage you over this week to take a look at your level of intellectual well-being and determine how satisfied you are. So it's not about what anybody else thinks. It's how satisfied are you? If you want to improve, focus on just one area. Don't try to do all the things. Don't don't be like me. Y'all know that I try to do all the things at once and it just does not work out well for me. So just do as I say and focus on one thing. Set yourself up for success and make a SMART goal. We've talked about SMART goals before. And I think the key with this one, there are 
be specific, measurable, time, all those are important too. But really, I think the key with this is be realistic with yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't have time to sit down and read for an hour every day, don't make that as part of your goal. Amanda, if y'all want to learn to play chess again, maybe you may not have to learn it again. But if y'all want to play chess again, it may not be realistic to be like, we're going to play chess every single night for an hour. That's probably not realistic with your schedule at the moment. Think about your lifestyle and what will fit in. And then sometimes we think about how our lifestyle is, but we don't always think about what could stop us. Think about what those barriers are and then make a plan for them. What could you start doing to increase your intellectual well-being? What's mm -hmm. one thing you could do over the next week or so? I guess mine, I could say to do some brain games. To just have some like apps or whatever it is on my phone um, that I can just kind of go to for five or ten minutes. Like if you're uh, sometimes like I'll get to work early or I'm early doing something, an appointment, I could just sit in my sit there and just work on that. And also I forgot there's actually a chess app. And I was like, you know what? And you could actually play each other. And I was like, well, uh, my husband and I could do that so we could get back into chess and and play that on our apps. So I guess two things, but we'll see which one comes out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I love about those is that they weren't, they didn't take up a lot of time because you know your schedule, you know that you may not have the time to devote to a, a big long time frame. So just something quick you could do when you needed that little break. For myself, I think that instead of me listening to my book, I will listen to something that will be a personal growth for myself, even, you know, for some type of podcast. So I'm thinking, looking at my, my week and my weeks ahead, we're very busy right now. We have two of our three children who are competing in their extracurriculars, like on a regular basis, like multiple times. I think I have, I don't know, like 15 games this week over the next seven days that I'm going to be going to in one place or another. And so I think the apps are going to be the best route for me to be able to get some of that in. And so maybe some of the crossword puzzle apps or some of the word apps, but then also trivia apps that I can do in the car with my family while we're traveling to and from places so that we're interacting with each other, but also all working on our intellectual health and well-being. I have a pretty busy week coming up as well. Different. I have planned a lot in my schedule throughout the day. And I think mine is going to be, I'm just going to rest. I'm not going to plan to do anything as far as stimulating my brain. I would like to rest my brain. So that that's my plan for the next week or so. We thank you for listening. We hope that intellectual wellness is something that you will strive for. And hopefully if it was a new concept for you that you gained a couple of tips that you'll be able to implement, stay tuned for future episodes about wellness during Living Well Month. Thanks for joining us. This is Life Simplified. Thanks for listening to Life Simplified. We are Family and Consumer Sciences agents with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. Contact us at lifesimplifiedpodcast at gmail.com.